Hello, I'm Melissa Melton with the Rural Community Assistance Partnership. In this segment, we're going to be talking about distribution systems. There are many parts to a distribution system. Some important ones are the distribution mains, pump stations, and storage tanks. Your community's distribution system can be as expensive and complex as the treatment process itself. There are many considerations and concerns in this part of providing water. After water leaves the treatment plant, it must be adequately and safely stored. The water distribution system should have enough storage capacity to meet all expected needs. Typically, a 24-hour supply for its consumers. A drinking water system's water quality may be acceptable when the water leaves the treatment plant. However, a variety of transformations can happen after the water enters and travels through a distribution system. Testing and monitoring can be very costly for a small drinking water system. Despite the cost, both raw and finished water must be tested regularly. Each drinking water system is required by law to monitor and report on numerous water quality parameters from source to tap. Water producers need to understand the causes of water quality degrading during the distribution process because, in addition to taste and odor problems that occur, research also suggests that degraded water quality increases the risk of gastrointestinal diseases. Maintaining the distribution system is important to keep drinking water quality at its best. Flushing the distribution system at least twice a year and line scouring every few years are two of the best ways to keep the system clean. Flushing the system helps keep sediment and biofilms down, which can affect taste and bacteria levels. Unless the water treatment plant is located entirely uphill from the community it serves, thus making it possible for the system to supply water via gravity, it will have to pump water to its customers. Pumps are an important part of any water distribution system because they discharge pressurized water to the pipe network or lift it to places it cannot go by gravity, especially to water towers. This is a high service building. After the water is treated, it comes into these this pumps here and goes out to the customers. Each one of these pumps is 800 horsepower. We have to change the oil in them every uh, six months. To repair one of these pumps, we do preventive maintenance every day. Uh, the cost could be anywhere from $10,000 to $16,000. So we try to uh, keep every pump that we have in operation as cheap as we can. In areas where there are hills or higher elevations, water pressure decreases as it moves uphill. In these cases, it is necessary to boost the pressure. Pressure is boosted using pumps housed inside a pressure boosting station. Not all systems have or need pressure boosting. Cross connections are points in a distribution system where chemical, biological, or other contaminants can come in contact with potable water. A backflow event is when contaminants are drawn or pushed into water system at a cross connection. Any viable business must be able to determine how much of its product it is making and selling if that business is to be viable. Your water system is a business. The best way for a water utility to account for the water it produces and sells is the use of meters. Most residences have water meters located somewhere on their property. Our water is in a cycle. We consume it, it's treated, and it's returned to a place like this where the cycle is started all over again. Hopefully you have a better understanding of all that it takes to bring you clean, safe water and to protect the public's health. I'm Melissa Mountain with the Rural Community Assistance Partnership.